In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of the sulfate ion SO4 2 minus. So the first thing we need to do is tally up the number of valence electrons in this polyatomic ion. Now sulfur is in group six, it's a calcogen, it has six valence electrons. Oxygen also has six valence electrons, but there's four of them. So we're going to multiply six by four. And then because the polyatomic ion has a negative charge, we need to add two electrons. So four times six is 24, plus six is 30, plus two, that's 32. Now notice that the number that we have is a multiple of eight. When you see this, this indicates that there's not going to be any lone pairs on the central sulfur atom. So let's start with sulfur, and then let's put the four oxygen atoms around it. Now the question is, how many bonds does sulfur want to have? Because we can put a single bond in each, but is that the ideal situation? What we want to do is we want to minimize the formal charge. A quick way to find a formal charge on an element is to take the valence electrons and subtract it by the bonds and dots. Now, sulfur has six valence electrons, and we know that in this example, because we had 32 valence electrons, there's not gonna be any dots on the central sulfur atom. So in order to get a formal charge of zero, we wanna have six bonds. This is gonna give us the most stable Lewis structure of the sulfate ion. So right now, this is four bonds. Two of them need to be double bonded. Now, when oxygen has one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs and a negative charge. When oxygen has two bonds, it's going to be neutral, and it's going to have two lone pairs. So this is the Lewis structure of the sulfate ion. As you can see, it has a tetrahedral molecular geometry. The hybridization around a sulfur atom is sp3. It's sp3 hybridized. Now what we can do is we can draw a few Lewis structures of the sulfate ion. If we take a lone pair on the oxygen, we could use it to form a pi bond and then break this pi bond and make a lone pair. And so the result in Lewis structure will look like this. So what we can do is basically move the double bond around these oxygen atoms. So there's many variations of resonance structures that we can draw, but these two resonance structures are equivalent because they have the same energy level. But let's draw resonance structures that are not equivalent to each other so we can discuss their relative stability. So what we could do is we can take a lone pair, we could break a pi bond and put a lone pair there. If we do that, we'll get this resonance structure where sulfur has five bonds instead of six. And now we're going to have three oxygen atoms with a negative formal charge. Now what will the formal charge on sulfur be? If you recall, the formal charge is equal to the valence electrons minus the number of bonds and dots on that particular atom. So in the case of sulfur, it's six. And for the structure on the right, it has five bonds, no dots. So it has a positive one formal charge. Here, it's zero. So I'm not going to put anything for that. Now let's draw another Lewis structure where we take the pi bond and push the two electrons on that oxygen atom. So in this case, each oxygen atom will have a negative one formal charge. So all of these are acceptable Lewis structures of sulfate. However, they're not equally stable. If we were to calculate the formal charge on the sulfur atom for that one, it's going to be the six valence electrons minus four bonds and zero dots. So this sulfur has 
a 2 plus formal charge, or a plus 2. But notice that the net charge is the same. If we take plus 1 and add it to minus 3, the net charge is still negative 2. If we take plus 2 and add it to negative 4, the net charge is still minus 2. So the net charge doesn't change. So all of these are acceptable Lewis structures of sulfate. But which one is more stable? Well, the answer is this one. This is the most stable Lewis structure of sulfate because the formal charges are at a minimum. Sulfur has a formal charge of zero. A neutral particle is more stable than a particle with a charge. Particles with charges are more reactive. This one is the least stable due to the high separation of charge. The sulfur has a 2 plus charge as opposed to a plus 1 charge. So this is the least stable Lewis structure of sulfate. As you can see, it has a lot of charges. So now you know how to draw the Lewis structure of sulfate, and you also know how to identify the most stable resonance form of this particular polyatomic ion. Thanks for watching.